Hello Internet, this video should be on the shorter side for once. With the recent release of Future Redeemed, I wanted to make a video on the future of the Xeno series, specifically how likely it is that we get a Xeno Saga remake of some sort in the future. Now, with that said, I will be talking about some spoilers for Future Redeemed, specifically the latter half of this video, so if you've not finished the DLC campaign yet, please make sure to pay attention for the spoiler warning then. Unlike the rest of the Xeno series, Saga is in a strange spot. It's easily the least accessible to modern audiences. Blade, of course, as every game on the Switch save X, which is on the Wii U, which until a few months ago was pretty accessible, but with the eShop closing down, we've sort of entered a weird spot with that one as well. But that aside, um, Xenogears, while having a massive price spike in the physical version, at least is still accessible for download on the PS3 for I think $10, which isn't the most modern console, but it's still something. There's also emulation, which is an option if you're really desperate to play the game and you don't have access to any of the other methods. Saga, on the other hand, uh, it released on the PS2 and that's it. We haven't gotten a digital release or anything in regards to it. And if you want to get all three of the games to play on the PS2, you're looking at hundreds of dollars before you even have the PS2 or a PC that's powerful enough to emulate them, which is a bit difficult. So what are the chances of Xenosaga getting released in some form, be it a remaster or a digital form? While we haven't heard anything official from Bandai yet, there is a number of pieces of info which I wanted to discuss that are sort of in support of the idea. The first bit we have is that on February 9th, Bandai announced an HD remaster of Baton Kaitos 1 and 2. Now for those who don't know, Baton Kaitos was developed by Monolith Soft for the GameCube around the same time as Xeno Saga. Why I bring this up is because it shows that Bandai is willing to give Monolith Games a second shot here. Also because the amount of sales the two games had. Japan, Baton Kaito sold 80,000 copies in the first two weeks. In comparison, Xenosaga sold, Xenosaga 1 sold over 240,000 in the first three days. To compare further, Baton Kaito sold 14,000, or Baton Kaito 2 sold 14,000 in its first week, while Xenosaga 3 sold 180,000 copies in its first months. Of course, for the first game in the series, there are going to be higher numbers than the sequels, but it's clear that overall Xenosaga had a way higher numbers and sales than Baton Kaitos. That leads me into my next point. In 2019, Katsuhiro Harada tweeted this, confirming that Bandai was considering a Saga remaster, but it failed because it was supposedly not able to make enough money. Now, combined with my last point, I'm sure this seems strange considering how much better than Baton Kaitos Saga did. Despite this, Bandai released the remaster. I think this might be a soft test of some sort on Namco's part. If Baton Kaitos does well enough, or better than expected, they might be more likely to remaster Saga following it. On top of Saga's initial success, there have been other great successes in the Xeno series recently. Xenoblade 2, which released at the very end of 2017, sold 1.3 million copies, which was before the market analysis was done for the Xeno Saga re-release. In comparison to the recently released Xenoblade 3, which sold 1.8 million copies in the first five months, comparing to Xenoblade 2's first few months out, that's a 40% increase. While Xenoblade and Xenosaga aren't directly connected, it's no stretch to say that the Xeno name at least brings attention to one another. Fans who have played and enjoyed Xenoblade and are looking for more are likely to buy and play Xenosaga, developed by the same people, assuming it's on the same console. With how much Xenoblade games have been trending up lately, it's certain that the success would carry over, at least partially, to Xenosaga. To continue further, Monolith and Bandai have had a good relationship with one another. Even with Xenoblade 2, Bandai allowed Monolith to include both Cosmos and Talos in Xenoblade 2, which could have been for marketing at the time if they were still considering the Saga remaster, but that aside, Namco, unlike Square, is actually willing to work with Monolith on these things. Now we're entering spoiler territory. Future Redeem will be completely off limits from this point on, so if you haven't finished it, make sure to click off. So for those of you who have finished Future Redeem, do you certainly know the reason this video was made? Starting with the smaller stuff, Bandai Namco is listed in Future Redeem's credits under a special thanks. Now, we all know what that is. In the scene at the beginning of Chapter 5, a number of direct Xenosaga ties are mentioned and shown. I discussed these in depth with some others in my most recent video, so if you're interested in hearing about how Blade and Saga may be connected more in depth, check that out. For now, here's the shortened version. There are three major things that were brought up in that cutscene. First was the Vector logo on the radio. While well, the Vector logo was shown in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 before, that was on Cosmos' vessel. This was on a random radio, so something's definitely up. Next thing is Dmitry Yuryev. He is a massive player in Xenoblade, uh, Xenosaga's plot, and him being name-dropped in Xenoblade is not only a massive revolution, but could potentially line up with Saga if a minor retcon was made. 
Finally, this isn't evidence, but in the final shot we have of Earth, which is known as Lost Jerusalem in Zenosaga, reformed. Over its surface, we see a blue comet that's falling. Many people have speculated that this could be Cosmos, as at the end of Zenosaga 3, we see her drifting through space towards an Earth-like planet, while the main cast searches for Lost Jerusalem. With all these connections, it's very clear that Monolith is working with Namco in some way. This very well could be for marketing, to get the Xenoblade fans more interested in Xenosaga. Uh, even just as an example, Dmitry Yuryev's uh, page on the Xenosaga wiki has skyrocketed in popularity due to the DLC. It is now more popular than both Cosmos and the Zohar page, which is insane if, you, <laughs> if you've ever been on the wiki. Um, it shows that there's a ton of interest in Saga, and Namco certainly knows that. That was all the evidence I was able to compile about this subject, but if I missed anything, feel free to comment below. And while you're at it, tell me what you think about this theory. Do you think we're getting a Saga remake anytime soon, or is this just some nice easter eggs and references to Saga and Takahashi's older works? That said, uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.